Good evening, my friend. It is evening time on Monday night, the 16th of August, 2021, and you will hear this on Tuesday or later. It's Tuesdays with Tata, except we don't have Tata this week, so we're going to have a little sabbatical for Tuesdays with Tata. Lisa's in San Antonio getting him ready to move, and uh, our son-in-law was diagnosed with COVID, and things are just in a little bit of a flux, and so um, he's not with us tonight. Things are just a little too crazy and too busy in San Antonio, so he will be here, Lord willing, next week live in Nebraska at the desk with me with his very own microphone and headphone set, and we'll be doing Tuesdays with Tata on location in Nebraska from here forth, Lord willing. So I wanted to bring you an episode, though. I didn't want you to miss having an episode on Tuesday. Um, man, the, the podcast, by the way, you guys are doing an amazing job, friend. Um, we have w- almost 100% more downloads in the first two weeks of August than we have in any two-week period ever in the history of the podcast. It's It's at this rate going to almost get to 25,000. We've never hit 20,000 downloads in a month. And so, um, good job, um, sending it to your friends and sharing it and listening. And I'm, I'm just, Lisa and I are so grateful that, um, this little thing that we started to try to help people find hope as we were trying to figure out how to find it ourselves, um, is being so, um, widely shared and listened to around the world. Um, just really, really grateful uh, for you and, and hopeful that it helps you, um, so we got some other news today. Um, we got an email from uh, Waterbrook, from uh, Susan Jaden, my editor at Waterbrook Penguin Random House. And she said, hey, we have an offer to publish your book. I've seen the interview in German. So now we're going <laughs> to we're gonna have German and Italian versions uh, of the book. The Italian version is releasing now, like any time. We were supposed to be there. Um, but unfortunately, um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world and with the pandemic and with um, terrorism and different things happening. And um, it is, we're just not going to materialize that we get to go this time. So we're really sad because we were going to get to speak at the launch of the book in Italian. And um, our friends there are disappointed with us. And we're hoping that the Lord will carve out an opportunity to go over to Italy sometime and meet all those wonderful folks that got the job done to get the book released and um, that language. So someday that'll happen, but it's not happening now. And so since it's Tuesdays, but it's not Tuesday with Tata, I'm going to give you just a little thought. My friend John Swanson and I um, had a little email exchange a few weeks ago, and I thought it was worth sharing with you. Um, You know, we had John on the show with Tata a few weeks ago to talk about um, how to say what to say and how to say kind things when somebody's going through something hard. And John's written a little book from his perspective as a hospital chaplain called This is Hard, What I Say When Loved Ones Die. And, uh, of course, I'll put the link in the show notes to you. But the thing is, um, it's, it's a it's a wonderful little book, and, and this podcast isn't about the book. We already covered that, but um, I will share some ideas from the book. But it's about um, something that happened between John and I when he sent me the copy of the book, and I think it's an interesting thing to think about, um, and there's some scripture around it, just a short little thought that I have for you today. Um, I'm excited about Tata coming, excited about the German release of the book and the Italian release of the book, and um, getting really close to being done with the new book, and Kathy's getting ready to hopefully sell it to a public publisher um, and find the right partner to get that message out to the world and uh, so hope is the first dose is coming alive uh, one chapter at a time and it's getting close and I think it's the best thing I've ever written so Lord willing that'll be in your hands sometime in 2022 and uh, you know today we're going to talk about when it's time to put your name on it are you willing if you if you bother doing something are you willing to put your name on it and if if not then why and if so then what are some parameters around why and when you should be willing and how you can get to the place where you're willing to put your name on the things that you do with this precious time that you have in your life we're going to talk about when it's time to put your name on it and we're going to start today Hey, I'm so glad to have you listening. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska on the banks of the North Platte River with my beautiful, amazing, intelligent, as Tommy Walker says, darling wife, Lisa Warren, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis, who are currently in bed. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind. I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery. To get that done, you can get the show notes and more on my website at wleewarnmd.com. And if you like the show, please share it with your friends and subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. Here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. 
All right. So a few weeks ago, uh, I received a wonderful little package in the mail, and John Swanson had sent me several copies of his new book, This Is Hard, What I Say When Loved Ones Die. He wrote that during the pandemic, um, and he's used it in hospital ministry to help people kind of get their heads around the best way to communicate with people when they're going through something hard, especially when they've lost a loved one. Uh, As the father of a lost son, as a bereaved parent, I have heard just about every wrong thing that people can say when you're hurting the most. People say the craziest things. They think they're they're being helpful, but they say silly Christian platitudes and things that actually are generally more harmful than helpful. And, and John's given us a really good guide. But the interesting thing is when John sent me the book, he sent me five or six copies to, for me to give to the hospital chaplains at our hospital, but he sent a copy for me and Lisa. And I opened it up and noticed that he had not signed it. Now, John famously is introvert. He's he's quiet about his many gifts. He doesn't put himself out there too much, although he is a writer and he's very public in that type of his, part of his life, but he's very humble. And so I wrote him an email and said, hey, thanks for the books, but how come you didn't sign one for me? How, how come you didn't put your name on it? A few days later, I got one in the mail that was signed, and I didn't mean for him to do that, but he, he did. And he sent me an email that he'd been thinking about my question. And here's what John says. This is how our relationship works. We ask each other a question. We think about it for a while. We reply. And John said, here's where your simple question took me. If it's not worth signing, do you believe in it? If you don't believe in it, why make it available? If you do believe in it, why not sign your work? If it's worth signing, isn't it worth sharing with people you care about? Now, that's John Swanson in a nutshell. If it's not worth signing, do you believe in it? If you don't believe in it, why make it available? And if you do believe in it, why not sign it? And if it's worth signing, isn't it worth sharing with people you care about? Now, here's the thought I have for you. Really quick little thought. There's a scripture. There's two verses, actually, in Colossians chapter 3 in the New Testament. First one is Colossians three seventeen, where... Uh, Paul, the apostle, says, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And in Colossians 3.23, he says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Listen, friend, it's a short thought, and it, it, it almost makes itself. But when I write a book... And it comes out. I'm really proud of it. And when you want a copy of it, you want me to sign it. I write, hey, you know, Will or Lola or Juliana or Lisa or uh, Dennis or or Charles or whoever is is reading um, the book. I I sign it to them. So I'm giving it to you with your name. And I'm saying some encouraging thing and writing a scripture. And then I'm going to say, God bless you. And I sign my name, W. Lee Warren, M.D., or sometimes Lee Warren, or sometimes just Lee if I'm really friends with somebody. And I sign my name on it because I've worked hard for that thing that is now in your hands, and I want the the book to be a blessing to you, but I'm also proud of it. I'm proud that this thing is in real life. As my words have, have come into real life as a thing that's in your hands now, and it's going to be able to help you and help somebody. So I'm willing to put my name on it. So John says, if it's not, if you if you create it, if you took the time to create it, then why wouldn't you sign it? If you, if you, if it's not worth signing, that means you probably don't believe in it, right? If I, if I was ashamed of my book, I wouldn't want to sign it. I'd take the dust cover off and try to get my name off of it because I'd be ashamed of it. If you don't believe in it, why do you even bother making it available? So if, I, if I'm not willing to sign it, then I probably don't believe in it. And why am I even putting it out there, right, John says? But if you do believe in it, then you ought to be proud of it. You ought to sign it and you ought to be willing and actually excited about sharing it with people. I had a hard time when I first started writing of, of telling people about my work. I didn't want to I didn't want to be perceived as bragging and I didn't want to be one of those guys that always talks about his book. But at the same time, I realized, look, I really do have something here that's going to help people. I've got to be willing to share it with them. I've got to be willing to to say, hey, I think my book might help you. That's a hard thing, by the way. When somebody, when you find out somebody you care about is going through cancer or they've lost somebody, it's a hard thing to believe in your work enough to say to send an email and say, hey, I know what you're going through. I'm so sorry. I, I heard about what you're going through. You don't usually actually know what somebody's going through. But I heard about it. I'm really sorry. I, I have a book that I think might help you. And, and to have enough confidence that you're willing to put it out there. But when you do that, oftentimes it turns out to really be a blessing to you as much as it is to the recipient. Because sometimes later on you'll get an email that says, you know what? 
I couldn't read that at first. It was too hard. But six months later, when I was really struggling, I read it and I found a little hope and it really turned things around for me. It really made a difference for me. And you find out that that little nudge from the Holy Spirit to put your name on it and put it in that person's hand made a difference. And so John's questions come back, right? If it's not worth signing, do you believe in it? You know, Paul says, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all as if you're working for God and not for yourself or not for a human master. If, if you don't believe in it, why bother putting it out there at all? And if you do believe in it, then why wouldn't you be willing to put your name on it? So if you believe in the thing that you're doing, I'm not talking about writing books here. I'm not talking about books. I'm talking about the work that you do, the things you choose to engage in, friend, the, the time that you spend on this earth in whatever venue, whatever area it is, the time that you spend and the job that you do. Is it worth putting your name on it? Are you, are you proud enough that you would sign it? My dad always told me, if you're stuffing envelopes, stuff them better than anybody else. If you're digging ditches, dig them better than anybody else. Be known as the guy who digs the best ditch, if that's what you do. If you're called to do that thing, do it better than anybody else. Do it as best you can and be proud of your work. Sign your name on it, man. Be willing to put your name out there because they, you want to be known as the, the person who does that thing in a way that honors God. And that's what I'm getting to tonight. Sign your work. Live your life in a way that when the inspector comes at the end and he says, who dug this beautiful ditch? Who did this surgery? Who wrote this book? Who did this thing? You'll say, um, that was me. And he'll say, hey, would you mind signing that for me? Well done. That's what I'm getting at today. It's just a short little thought. John said, one more time, if it's not worth signing, do you believe in it? If you don't believe in it, why make it available? If you do believe in it, why not sign your work? And if it's worth signing, isn't it worth sharing with people you care about? Now, let me read you something from John. In this book, one of his ideas, what he says when loved ones die, and you'll see why I think John's work is worth him signing. Here's a chapter. People say really stupid things to hurting people. They usually don't mean it. The mom and dad were sitting by the bed. Their toddler was close to death. Within an hour or so, the child would be gone. I was talking them through what was going to happen next, and I said, people are going to say things without thinking. There are so many things people say. In one of our oldest stories of comfort that failed, Job lost his kids, his belongings, and his health, and then Job's three friends rubbed pain into his wounded heart with words of blame. The mom nodded, she understood, and she said, but they mean well. She's right, of course, but she was more gracious than I would be. What can you do? You can smile and nod. You can avoid those people, at least for now. You can enlist a friend to be with you and protect you. You can excuse yourself to go to the restroom. You can respond with, I know you mean well, but that's not how I feel at the moment. You can find the people who give you life. John's little book is called This is Hard, What I Say When Loved Ones Die by John Swanson. He signed it for me after he thought about it. Because if it's not worth signing, do you believe in it? And if you don't believe in it, why make it available? And if you do believe in it, why not sign it? And if it's worth signing, isn't it worth sharing with people you care about? Friend, sign your work. Put your name on it. Do it in a way that you'll be proud of. And the person who receives it from you will say, Gosh, thanks for signing that. I really want to know that you're the one who did this for me. Thank you. And at the end, you'll say, well done. And you'll remember to start today. Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren Podcast is listener-supported. Check out patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patrons and partners get free books, transcripts, special patron-only episodes, and more. And partners like you allow us to stay ad-free and keep on growing. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And go to my website, wleewarnmd.com slash newsletter to connect with the newsletter every Sunday since 2014. You get my best prescriptions for how to change your mind and change your life for free every Sunday. wleewarnmd.com slash newsletter. Get in the community. The theme music for the show is Water Into Wine by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by Tommy and Eileen and all the great folks over at Tommy Walker Ministries. Check it out, TommyWalkerMinistries.org, TommyWalkerMinistries.org. And if you need prayer or want to pray with and for people all over the world, go to the prayer wall at wleewarnmd.com slash prayer. 
wlewarnmd.com slash prayer. Remember, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and you have to start today. It's Tuesday, and next Tuesday, Tata will be here for Tuesdays with Tata in Nebraska. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'll talk to you soon. Pray for our son-in-law. He's got the COVID. Pray for Lisa and Tata as they travel. We're praying for you. God bless you, friend. Have a great day.